Okay, so now in this lecture, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the hypothesis testing error. So until now, we have already discussed the criminal trials that uh, in criminal trial, what will be the type one error and what will be the type two error. So here's sh some shocking news for you that nobody perfect. Yes, if uh, as I already mentioned the production, so every organization want to produce some goods, quality goods, because if they produce in some defective items, then what the customer will return that item and at the end, it will be totally converted into a loss for the organization. So every organization, every person, if they provide in services or if they produce in something, they try their level best to produce some good product. So no one want to produce some bad product, but we know that only God is the perfect. Okay, in production, maybe your quality level is very high. Maybe you keeping six sigma, but maybe something happened. Maybe some defective products you produce. Then in that case, what you will do? Even with the lots of evidence, you can still make the wrong decision. Sometimes we have a lot of evidences, but we prepare a specific lot. We accept a specific lot. We buy some product, we buy a car because the brand of that car, because the brand of that mobile phone is very good. They have some history, but still there is a chance that maybe it will not perform well. So now in this one, I just want to discuss in this lecture some errors. When you will be going to make an error, when we perform hypothesis test, we can make mistake in two ways. The null hypothesis is true, but we mistakenly reject it. So just like in the jury example, the client is innocent, but the jury say that the client is not, the client is not innocent, but he is guilty. Or maybe the client is guilty, but the jury will say, according to the uh, evidences, they will say that the person, the client is innocent. So there are two types of error. I don't want to go into the detail because in my previous lectures, I have already discussed this type one error and type two error. So while doing hypothesis testing or sampling testing, we can make these two type of errors. Now, which type of error is more serious? So both type of errors are serious, but now which one will be the most serious one? So it depends on the situation at hand. It depends on the experiment which you want to conduct. In other words, the gravity of the error is context dependent. It depends on the environment. It depends on the analysis. Here is an illustration of the four situation in a hypothesis test. So it's not true, but my decision, we will reject it. So when you reject a true, let's suppose you reject a true production, a good quality production. You say that this production is not good. So this is called type one error. If you reject it on the basis of the false statement on the basis of defective element, so it's okay, it's a nice decision. But if you fail to reject it, but the hypothesis, but the products are good, so it's okay, fail to reject it, it's speed, you will accept it. But if you, the product is defective, the person is guilty, and you fail to consider that person guilty, it means you consider that person innocent, so this is called type 2 error. So how often will a type 1 error occur? Now this is the question and you need to solve that question and you need to find the probability of this question. Since a type 1 error is rejecting a true null hypothesis, the probability of type 1 error is our alpha level. So normally we use this alpha and which denote the level of significance, which denote that you reject a good quality product. The product of the quality is good. The quality of that product is good, but you reject it. When H0 is false and we reject it, we have done the right thing. In the other scenario, if this is false, if this is guilty and we consider this as a guilty, so it's good. A test ability to detect a false hypothesis is called the power of test. So now we need to conduct a power test. That the analysis, the acceptance and rejection decision which we already conducted, is it right or is it wrong? And how much is the possibility of it? So when H0 is false and we fail to reject it, we have made a type 2 error. We assign the letter beta to the probability of this mistake. It's harder to assess the value of beta because we don't know what the value of the parameter really is. There is no single value for beta. We can think of a whole collection of beta on one for each and correct uh, a parameter value. So in the quality management, 
we call alpha as a producer risk and we call beta as a consumer risk. So what is producer risk and what is consumer risk? So producer risk is as I already mentioned that if a producer producing good, uh, product, so their aim is to produce 100% quality good product. But maybe during the production some random processing error occur and there are some defective lot also occur in that production. So now if an inspector select a sample from that product, if, if in the selection of that sample, if he select some defective product and if you check it and, and then on the basis of that defective product, if the inspector reject the whole lot, so it means it is a huge loss for the womb, for the producer. So uh, the producer try their level best to keep this value a very minor one because if this value increase, it means there is too much risk, there are too much defective part in the whole lot. So when the value of alpha is going up, it means there is a high chance that the inspector will find some defective parts from the uh, from in the sample and on the basis of that they will reject the good lot so if they reject the good lot on the basis of those defective items found in the sample it's called type 1 error beta which is also called consumer so basically if a firm producing 50 50 50 50 mean if they producing 100 units in those 100 units if they produce 50 defective and 50 goods, if an inspector randomly select some parts, some sample size and fortunately in that sample, if they found that they are good parts, so on the basis of good parts, even though in the real sense, that lot should be rejected because there are 50-50 chance. There is too much risk involved. There is too much mean defective parts involved. So they need to reject this. But on the basis of that sample, they will accept a rejected lot. So this is a very huge risk for the producer, for the consumer because consumer will buy that lot and at the end he she will know that what did I, what, what that I did because if there are 100 units, so 50 units will be defective. So one way to focus our attention on a particular beta which is also called the consumer risk is to think about the effect size, okay. How big a difference would matter? we could reduce beta for all alternative parameter values by increasing alpha. So when we increase alpha, okay, when we increase alpha, this would reduce beta but increase the chance of type 1 error, okay. Because when you increase the alpha, what does it mean? It means the level of significance will be increased. It means in your production, the defective proportion will be going up, okay. This would reduce beta because alpha and beta are working in negative direction, in the opposite direction. When one going up, the other is going down. This would reduce beta but increase the chance of type 1 error. So the chance of type 2 error will be decreased but the chance of type 1 error will be increased. Why? Because maybe the inspector takes some defective product and on the basis of that, maybe they will reject your whole lot. So this tension between type 1 and type 2 error is inevitable. The only way to reduce both type of errors is to collect more data. Otherwise, we just wind up trading off one kind of error against the other. So uh, in order to further expand this, sometimes the inspector conduct not only single sampling. They conduct double sampling, triple sampling or multi sampling. So when they conduct double, triple sampling, they these sampling techniques further reduce the probability of error, further reduce the probability of risk. So at this way, they will remove the riskier part from the analysis and on the basis of this, they divide the whole scenario. So hypothesis testing, as I already mentioned, that null hypothesis, normally we, it contains the sign of equality. So null hypothesis means, for example, if H0 is, the mean is mean of H0 is mean is equal to 120, so alternative will be it's not equal to 120. So you can see it's always include the sign of equality or if H0 is mean is greater than or equal to 120, the alternative will be that mean is less than 120. So once again it's contain the sign of equality. If H0 mean is less than or equal to 120, so H1 will be mean is greater than 120. So you can see the uh, null hypothesis always include the sign of equality and the opposite of this one will be, so this is the less than. 
the opposite of this is not equal to the opposite of this one will be less than and the opposite of this one will be greater than so we will construct uh, and on the basis of the alternative because on the alternative basis we will confirm that the tail of the test is two tail or it's mean the the the, the risk is split in two parts or it's in the right tail or it's in the left tail so for example if it is two tail then we will sketch it that for example if it is a two tail test then we will split this because we not sure that if i ask you that how many uh, unit of uh, let's suppose a specific uh, uh, pen or how many uh, rupees or how many unit of dollar in my pocket so I mean you can say that you have 120 okay or you can say that if i say that i have 120 rupees in my pocket you will say no you have not 120 so maybe it will be greater or maybe it will be less than this so that is why we will divide this in two tails right tail normally we represent right tail at this way this is right tail for example the opposite of this will be less than or equal to if i say that in my pocket there are 10 or less than 10 rupees so the opposite of this will be greater than you say that it will be more than 10 so more than 10 will be occur at this left tail test so left tail test will be represented as this one okay this is left tail test so at this way you will interpret you will design the experiment for the uh, alternative hypothesis and you will decide on the base of alternative hypothesis that is it right tail test or left tail test thank you